But Liz, we thought you weren't coming back until tonight. I came over by plane, loaded with gifts oh. like an Eastern potentate. Here is one for you. <laughs> How lovely. It's a bottle of perfume, very expensive. Oh, thanks ever so much, Liz, your darling. Uh, what is God up to? In the bath. <laughs> I brought him a dressing gown for Africa. How thoughtful. He's only got 18. <laughs> Don't be acid, Monica. You know he loves peacocking about in something new. It's nice and thin, but highly suitable for Africa. This looks wonderful, Liz. I won't open it until I get home. <coughs> Miss Erickson looks more peculiar than ever this morning. Is her spiritualism getting worse? <laughs> she got in touch with a, a dead friend at a seance Sunday night. And all he said was, no, 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 and Christmas Day. Oh. It upset her very much. <laughs> <laughs> that damn thing never stops. Uh, hello, hello. Morris? Uh, no, he's in the bar. <laughs> Liz is here if you want to talk to her. Yes, yeah, she just arrived. Yes. Good morning, dear. I know on the plane. Yes, I saw the plane twice. We shall have to change the ending for England, but the author doesn't like what we do as long as Gary plays it. Oh, no, I'm lunching out. I'll come to the office directly after it. Oh, goodbye. Hello there, friend. Up, miss, as usual. <laughs> Do you think I could have a cup of coffee? I feel a sinking. Royal, right miss. Well, bring me one too, Fred. Royal. Right it's awfully resonant to Fred to go on calling me Miss, isn't it? I think he has sort of an idea that when you gave up being Gary's wife, you automatically reverted to maidenhood. Oh, it's a very pretty thought. <laughs> oh. I beg your pardon. No, I'm so awfully sorry about the bath, Miss Stillington. It didn't matter a bit. Uh, this is Mrs. S and I. Uh, Miss Stillington. Oh, how do you do? Mrs. S and I? Do you mean? I mean, are you Gary's wife? Yes. Oh, I thought he was divorced. Oh, well, we never quite got around to it. Oh, I see. Oh, but please don't look agitated. I asked and left him years ago. Uh, Miss Sillington lost her key last night, and so she slept in the spare room. Oh, poor dear. You must be absolutely congealed. Uh, do you think I can get a taxi? I'll ring for one. Oh, no, don't bother. My car's downstairs. It can take you wherever you want to go. Well, that's most awfully kind of you. No, <laughs> not in the least. The chauffeur has got bright red hair, and his name is Frobisher. You can't miss him. Thank you very much indeed. You're sure it's not inconvenient? Not at all. Just be sure that he comes back here after he's dropped you. Oh, yes, of course I will. Thank you again. Goodbye. Goodbye. I do hope you have a full cold. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, I'll see you out. <laughs> Please don't trouble. It's no trouble at all. Would you want anything with it, Miss? Oh, no, thank you. Sir. Just a coffee. I'll tell us if you're here. I don't think he knows. Thank you. Well, <laughs> has that been going on long, or is it new? Quite new. I found it wandering about in Gary's pajamas. Oh, poor little thing. How awful for her to be faced with me like that. You ought to have pretended I was somebody else. <laughs> so her right. She ought to be ashamed of herself. She did seem to be what is known as a lady. It's very odd, isn't it? I don't mind. If only they'd leave Gary alone. It makes the morning so complicated, Liz. I don't think. He's as flamboyant as he pretends to be. It's just that he can't seem to say no or goodbye. <laughs> he says goodbye often enough. He just always manages to give the impression that he doesn't really mean it. <laughs> well, I have a go at him. After all, it's high time he relaxed. If you think a big scene's necessary, we can get Morris and Hugo too and have a real rouser the night before he sails. Well, Morris is so hysterical these days, and Hugo's not nearly so reliable since he married Joanna. Do you like her, Joanna? Well, she's a lovely creature, but tricky. I like her right. I don't. <laughs> well, you wouldn't, darling. She's not your cup of tea at all. Who is it? Uh, Joanna! 
Oh, she's not bad. A bit predatory, perhaps. But as far as I can see, everybody's predatory. Everybody stalks their game, as far as I can see. Oh, well, I shall give it up for Lent. Good morning, darling. Where's my present? It's on the settee. Uh, it's not another one of those damn glass horses, is it? No, it's a dressing gown for Africa. Oh, Liz, it's absolutely wonderful. It's just what I wanted. It's absolutely charming. Thank you, darling. I'm mad about it. Oh, it really is perfect taste. Say something about it, Monica. I'm speechless. <laughs> Go away there, Monica. I need to talk to Gary before Morris gets here. Uh, you better hurry up. Mr. Moore will be here in a minute. Who's he? You know perfectly well. He's a young man who wrote that mad play, half in verse, and caught you on the telephone. And you were so busy being attractive and unspoiled by your great success that you promised him an appointment. I can't see him. You ought to protect me from things like that. So you must see him. He's coming all the way from Upfield. And it serves you right, snatching the telephone when I wasn't looking. I've noticed a great change in you lately, Monica. I don't know whether it's because you've stopped cramming yourself with potatoes or what it is, but it is nasty with each day that passes. Go away. I'm going. I shall be in the office if you want me. Of course you'll be in the office spinning awful plots and intrigues against me. I will if I can think of any. Shut the telephone off. All right. Now then, tell me all about your trip and everything. What did you think of the play? It was wonderful. That's good. Yes, very. It's a perfect part for you. We shall have to change the ending a little bit, but the author doesn't mind what we do as long as you play it. All uh -huh, right. Um, now then, I just wanted to uh, talk to you about something. I don't like that tone in your voice. What's on your mind? Don't you think it's time you started to relax? I don't know what you're talking about. But the fool was that poor little creature I saw here this morning in her evening dress. Uh, uh, she'd lost her latch key. Huh, they often do. Now listen, Liz. You are over 50, uh, no, 45, you know. Only just. And in my humble opinion, all of this casual scampering about, it's rather undignified. Scampering indeed. You have a genius for putting things unpleasantly. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I am not taking a moral view. I gave that up as hopeless years ago. It's all very well for you to come roaring back from Paris, where you've been up to God knows what, and start to bully me. I'm not bullying you. Yes, you are. Who left my bed and board, deserted me, left me a prey to everybody? On to me, I... I did, thank God. Well, then. Well, would you like me to have stayed? Certainly not. You drove me mad. So let's stop. <laughs> All this shilly-shallying about them. Pay attention. This today is the most irritating morning of my life. Now, uh, you have reached a moment in life when a little restraint will be becoming. Well, you know. You are no longer an irresponsible, debonair juvenile. You are an eminent man, advancing with every sign of reluctance into middle age. May God forgive you. Never mind about that. We all know about your irresistible fascination. We've watched it going on for the last 20 years. I met you for the first time. Exactly 11 years ago next August. And you were wearing a very silly hat. To be serious, your behavior naturally affects all of us. Monica, Hugo, Morris, and me, we are responsible for you. You're responsible for us. Just try not to be so devastatingly charming for a while. I think what fun it would be to be unattractive for a minute or two. Why? You might take to it, like Dr. Water. Yeah, Liz, you really are very sweet. I might as well be speaking Chinese. I admit I'm a trifle reckless every now and then, but I really don't do much harm to anybody. You do harm to yourself and to the few, the very few, who really mind about you. I suppose you discuss this with Mark and Morris and Hugo. Not yet, but I will, unless I see signs of improvement. 
Oh, oh Blackberry! Yes, you know I hate it when we make a concerted act. The thing that astonishes me in life is people's arrogance. What happens if I relax my loving hold on any of you for a minute? Disaster! I happen to go to New York to play a three-month season. Hugo immediately gets demanded, goes to be rich to recover, meets Joanna, and marries her. Huh? I go away for a brief holiday to the south of France. And when I come back, what do I find? You and Morris, between you, have bought the dullest Hungarian play ever written and produced it with Phoebe Yukish in the leading part. Phoebe Yukish playing a glamorous courtesan with about as much sex appeal <laughs> as a fried flower. Isn't this a bit <laughs> beside the point? It's certainly not. And I wish you would stop asking questions and just answering them yourself. It's making me giddy. Where would they have all been without me? Where would poor Monica be now if I had snatched her away from that sinister old aunt of hers and given her a job? With the sinister old aunt. And you, dear, you. One of the most depressing medically actresses on the English stage. Where would you be if I had forced you to give up acting and start writing? Acting? Good God. They didn't have to marry you to do it. <laughs> well, a fine gesture that turned out to be. You adore me. You know you did. I still do. You're so chivalrous, rubbing it in. How dependent we all are on you for every breath we take. That's not what I meant. You are dependent on us anyway now. After all, we stopped you in the nick of time from playing Peter Gilt. I still maintain I should have been magnificent as Peter Gilt. Oh, above all, we stop you from overacting. <laughs> you have now gone too far. <laughs> I think you're going to go away somewhere. I, I only just came back. Monica, 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 come in here this instant. What's the matter? Have you, or have you not, seen me overact? <laughs> Frequently. <laughs> it's conspiracy. I knew it. As a matter of fact, you're overacting now. Very well. I give in. Everybody's against me. It doesn't matter about me. Oh, no. I'm only the breadwinner. It doesn't matter how much I'm insulted or wounded. It doesn't matter that my timorous belief in myself is suddenly undermined. Your belief in yourself is about as timorous as Napoleon's. <laughs> and look what happened to him, poor chap. You're just trying to be funny now because you're ashamed. I don't think any of you would care a fig if I were exiled forever tomorrow. Probably you'd be delighted. I expect that's why I'm being forced to go to Africa. Oh, you're longing to go, you know it. Oh, but darling. Do please be careful when you're there. Don't go rushing around having affairs with everybody and showing off. Now then, um, about Morris, I want you to concentrate for a minute. How can I concentrate? What about Morris? What's wrong? I'm very worried. I think you might have to do a little bit of your famous finger wagging. It's, it's Joanna. Joanna? Morris is in love with her. How do you know? Well, everybody is talking about it. Now, I don't know how far it's gone or all the details, but I do know if it's true, something has to be done about it, done at once. Does Hugo suspect anything? I don't think so. But then he wouldn't, would he, unless it was shoved under his nose. I always told him he should never have married that stereotype diamond scented siren. I always said it was a grave mistake. Well, she's not as stereotyped as all that, but she is dangerous, all right. Oh, it's too tiresome, it really is. It upset all my plans for Africa. If Hugo finds out, it could bust up everything. It might stop the whole trip. What are we to do, Liz? Oh, there's that beastly young man from Upfield. And here I am, trembling like a leaf. I can't see him, I can't. Well, you've got to if you promised. My life is one long torment. And nobody even remotely cares. It <laughs> might not be the young man at all. It might be Morris. The hell with Morris. The hell with everybody. Don't be idiotic. Uh, it is... It can't be more. She's not coming till one o'clock. Uh, all right. Now, you must find out how much truth there is in this Joanna business. I shall be in until 1.15, so telephone me when he's gone. I'm munching whether he won't go. I can't give you a detailed report of his love life over the telephone with him still in the room. 
Oh, well, dial my number and when I answer, just say sorry, wrong number, and then I'll know. What will you know? That everything's all right. Oh, but if you say terribly sorry, wrong number, I'll know everything's all wrong and I'll be round in a flash to back you up. Intrigue. My whole existence is enmeshed in intrigue. So how have you got that clear? Uh, sorry, wrong number, everything all right. Terribly sorry, wrong number, everything all wrong. Yes. Do you promise to do it? Yes. I'll tell you another thing about my life here, if you'd care to hear it. Nobody in this house ever answers a bell under half an hour. <laughs> Miss Harrison, Fred! Now I'm going now. Remember, I shall be entirely from you. Miss Harrison, Fred, Monica! Harrison, the front bell had been pealing incessantly for 20 minutes. Uh, uh, yeah, but there's a woman at the back door with a tiny baby. What does she want? I do not know. There was no time to ask her. Most of the soup is gone by now, I expect. Did you call? Mother, uh, there's a woman at the back door with a tiny baby. <laughs> Go and deal with her. Well, what does she want? That can only be discovered by asking her. Please do so. There's no need to snap at me. Mr. Mall. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> My wife, Mr. Mall. She just popped in for a minute. Now I've got to pop out again. Oh, how do you do? Goodbye. <laughs> Don't forget, Gary. I shall be sitting by the telephone. I shall remember. I'll do sit down.